Hello, dear students. Welcome back to my channel, Hello Pharmacology. In today's session, let us learn about angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. What is the mechanism of action of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors? What are the examples for ACE inhibitors and their uses as well as adverse effects? And also, we'll talk about the drug interactions associated with angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. So moving on to the mechanism of action. So these angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors will inhibit the angiotensin converting enzyme activity, which is required for conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. This angiotensin 2 is responsible for the increase in the peripheral vascular resistance as well as the vasoconstriction, as well as it also responsible for the retention of sodium. As well as the production of the aldosterone, indirectly, indirectly leading to the increase in the blood pressure as well as the volume overload. So, on the other side, the angiotensin converting enzymes are responsible for degradation of the predikinin, which is a vasodilatory peptide, which will be helpful in case of hypertensive patient because of their vasodilatory action. So when you administer the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, this angiotensin converting enzyme activity is limited or it will be inhibited thereby there won't be any conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. As well as this predikinin will not be degraded due to the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. So as you can see, altogether it leads to the antihypertensive action. Apart from the ACE inhibitors will also inhibit the aldosterone production, thereby it promotes the sodium and water excretion. On the other hand, inhibition of aldosterone production leads to retention of the potassium. So that's why angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors will lead to hyperkalemia as a side effect. So whereas the bradykinin being the vasodilatory peptide, the bradykinin is responsible for dry cough as well as the development of angioedema, which are side effects associated with the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. So next we will move on to the examples of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. So first, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor was the captopril, followed by there was a the development of Another ACE inhibitor that is malapril, which is a prodrug which will be converted into the active form that is malaprilate with the help of hepatic esterase. And then came the lisinopril, which is a lysine derivative of malaprilate, and lisinopril is an active angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. So, moving on to the other examples. So, under AC inhibitor, we have got ramipril, benzapril. Perindopril, quinopril, trandopril, posinopril, mohizipril, captopril, lisinopril, and enalapril. So, what is the common thing you notice in these drug names? So that is the pril. So, those drugs ending with the pril, they belong to the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. So, please remember all the AC inhibitors are pro drug except for captopril and lisinopril, which both of them will exist in the active form. Next, moving on to the therapeutic uses of the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. So, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors will decrease the systemic vascular resistance by decrease by inhibiting the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. And also it will promote the natriuresis, that means it will help in excretion of potassium as well as the water. So, so because of their two advantages like reducing the systemic vascular resistance as well as promoting the sodium excretion. They are used in the treatment of hypertension. They are used in the treatment of heart failure in case of left ventricular dysfunction which occurs after myocardial infarction. It can be used in the treatment of diabetic nephropathy as it will reduce the proteinuria. It also helps in prevention of diabetic retinopathy in case of type 1 diabetic patient and also in Case of scleroderma renal crisis. 
So this is a diagrammatic representation of uses for ACE inhibitors. So it is used in the treatment of hypertension where there is increase in blood pressure. It helps in reduction of the blood pressure. It can be used in case of heart failure. It can be used in the case of left ventricular dysfunction associated following the myocardial infarction. In case of diabetic individuals, it helps in prevention and treatment of the diabetic nephropathy as well as diabetic retinopathy. So next, moving on to the adverse effects associated with the angiotensin inverting and their inhibitors. As you know, the the first most common side effect of ACE inhibitor is the after first dose hypotension. Hypotension, which occurs after the first dose, is the most common side effect associated with the ACE inhibitors. So this can be limited by initiating the small doses of ACE inhibitors. That can cause dry cough mainly due to the accumulation of the radicide. So it can cause renal failure, especially in case of individuals who are having bilateral renal artery stenosis. So that's why they're contraindicated in case of individuals with bilateral renal artery stenosis. Hyperkalemia can go for renal failure. It can cause hyperkalemia leading to the renal failure. So that's why it should be avoided along with the potassium sparing diuretic or there will be any potassium supplementation. So it can cause teratogenic effect in case, especially in case of second and third trimester of pregnancy. It can cause angioneurotic edema. Again, the reason being is the accumulation of the radicine. And there are minor adverse effects which are reversible in nature. They are neutropenia, hepatotoxicity, glycosuria, proteinuria, altered taste sensation, as well as the allergic skin rashes. These two side effects, that is the altered taste sensation as well as the allergic skin rashes, are most commonly seen with the captopril. So these are the diagram diagrammatic representation of the adverse effects of the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. That is the first dose hypotension, angioneurotic edema as well as dry mode due to the accumulation of the bradykinin, and it can cause renal failure, especially in case of bilateral renal artery stenosis, and it can lead to renal failure due to the hyperkalemia also. Next, moving on to the drug interactions associated with the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. So, with the non systemic antacids, these antacids will reduce the bioavailability of the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. And also, along with the non steroid or anti inflammatory drugs like paracetamol, lycopenac, etc., these enzymes will block the radicanine mediated vasodilation, thereby decrease the potency effect of the ACV inhibitors. Along with the potassium sparing diuretic or potassium supplementation, so this will aggravate or elevate the ACE inhibitor induced hyperkalemia. So capsaicin will increase the ACE inhibitor induced dry cough and in case along with lithium and digoxin, lithium and digoxin levels will be elevated when it is used concomitantly with the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. So this was all about the mechanism of action of angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and their uh, examples therapeutic indications, adverse drug reactions, as well as the drug interactions associated with the ACE inhibitor. If you find this video useful, please do subscribe to my channel. I love pharmacology and don't forget to share it. Hit the like button for more updates on pharmacology. Thank you.